welcome back to the channel that knows nothing. I am Jim, and let's get to it. God, Neo is just a like a bystander, isn't he? I forgot. There's some. It's a little bit darker than I thought. I should probably put a warning. This will go at the beginning. So today we are diving in to another one of my terrible stories. God, why does that look wrong? Like it's spelt wrong. Anyway, um, this was like my major assignment for one, for genre writing. It says it right there. And it's called Everybody Wants to Rule the World and it's about superheroes. So I want to quickly <laughs> give a statement. Um, it's kind of a bit triggering in some ways whereas uh there is three siblings and one of the siblings does not have superpowers and is bullied quite badly by the other two um so we were given a map uh for this assignment i can't find it at this present time but if i do i will put it up on screen we could choose anywhere on this map and anything in the story could happen so long as it coincided with what was on the map so i picked a little island off the coast of the actual central map which had like a hazardous sign on it and I wasn't really sure what I was going to do but basically there on the island um everybody has superpowers except for this one girl which is the main character is our protagonist who is also our antagonist in a way too basically in this world super villains don't exist yet so it's kind of the origin story of how super villains became a thing um so i will read it and then we can talk after <laughs> okay yeah so the place was called uh, seven winds and the island i picked was storm island or i don't know if i named it or if it was already named that anyway the island is known mostly because of its freak fr oh my god freak lightning tornado season though it though this wasn't the only strange thing about it, it is known it is a known fact to the rest of the seven winds that every inhabitant on storm island was born with superpowers Ava, God, pick my favourite name. Ava is like the generic girl name I use for everything. It's my favourite name. Um, although I pro probably won't use that name to name my, like, girl, if, uh, my girl, my daughter, if I have one, because uh, that's too much. Anyway, Ava was su staring out the window watching the rain and the lightning slowly turn the sky grey when her mum asked, what classes do you have on today, honey? Does it really matter? I don't pass any any of them. I'm not like you, Ava sighed. Or them. She eyed off her two older brothers sitting at the kitchen bench and then escaped to her room. Ava was born in late June 2031. She was completely normal in every way. There was only one problem. She was born without the super gene. And no doctor nor scientist could tell Mr. and Mrs. Andrews why. It all came down to Ava Andrews was never meant, was never destined to be a superhero. And it hurt her that she would never be like her parents, who had been the great superhero duo and then couple Cyclone and Tempest. She, she's right. Ava isn't like us, Zen smirked. Zen is the asshole. The other one's not as assholey, but Zen is the worst just pre-warning you guys <laughs> looking to his older brother to say something but neo was the quiet type and just nodded along with zen zen don't be so rude victoria andrews snapped at her son peter andrews god this is me just introducing all the characters so then later when i can i can refer to them as victoria and peter andrews um looked up from his newspaper well it's true darling ava is different see dad See, oh my god, see, dad agrees with us, Zen smiled. Victoria crossed her arms. We aren't talking about this. You two have to get ready for school, pointing to Neo and Zen. And you, she said, glaring down at her husband, you and I are having a talk. <laughs> see, like, the dad is meant to be like this asshole is just like, oh, well, you don't have superpowers. The mum is just like, don't worry, darling, you will get them eventually. But 
she's born without the genes, so it doesn't really matter. The heroes had had three children: Neo, who was the speed god, Neo, who was the, a speedster. When Neo was born, he basically sped out of the womb. Their father would brag; he was so proud. Then Zed, who took after his mother and could fly. He was trouble when he was younger, and that didn't change as he grew older. And last, there was Ava, and there was nothing spectacular. And <laughs> nothing spectacular happened. God, this is just me raging against <laughs> siblings. <laughs> uh, my siblings and I are nothing like this. This is meant to be like really dramatic, like dramatic and like intense. Um, when she was young, her parents thought she might change. But as Ava got older and she approached the 10th grade, they had lost all hope of their daughter ever being like them. Neo, God, me naming the children like three letters. <laughs> Neo, Zen, Ava, you're going to miss the bus. Victoria called from the bottom of the stairs at her children that morning. I'm coming, Ava sighed. She looked in the mirror and wiped away her tears. This year will be different. This was something that Ava had always said to herself, though with every passing school year it was the same. Same cold looks, same bullies, same pranks, and that same feeling of being the outsider. There was that there was a constant voice in the back of her head that echoed, One of these things is not like the others. Ava put on her best fake smile and ran downstairs, grabbing her bag and her lunch from her mum. She had her hand on the doorknob when Victoria mumbled, Ava, yeah, Ava sighed. <laughs> God, there's a lot of sighing from Ava turning back around. Uh, uh, have a good day, honey, Victoria started in. In all truth, she never knew what to say to Ava. Her daughter half smiled and, and then closed the door behind her. Ava sighed. Oh my God, not Ava. God, Victoria sighed this time. She had always dreamed of having a daughter, though in... That dream, it was one where she had superpowers and there was no boundaries between them. Victoria couldn't see that by trying to make Ava feel better only made the situation worse. Dangerous high! Oh my god, this is so cringe! <laughs> Named after one of uh, the island's very first hip uh, superheroes, Derek Dangerous. Can you see me just trying to be Marvel here? Um, anyway, was no place for someone without superhero. Oh my god, superpowers. It was no place for someone without superheroes. It was no place for someone without superpowers. God, I'm an idiot. Ava sat alone in all her classes on the bus ride to and from school, and at lunchtime, she sat in the kitchen with the lunch lady, Meg. She had the ability to have eight arms at once. That's the lunch lady. I remember I showed this to my parents, and they're just like, we don't understand. Why does Meg have eight arms. I'm like, because she has superpowers that allows her to have her eight arms? Anyway. You can't stay in here forever, Ava, Meg said at first break. Why not? It sucks out there. Ava took a bite of the sandwich her mum had made for her. Because aren't you too old to be hanging out with me now? Meg asked. She stopped serving the soup and turned around to face the younger girl. I'd stay in here forever if I could, Meg. God, this, there's some gay tension here, and Meg is... <laughs> Meg's, like, not meant to be, like, an old lunch lady. Otherwise, I would have said, um, I'd, li I'd stay in here forever if I could, Meg, Ava mumbled. She looked past the lunch lady and saw all the kids sitting at the tables in the cafeteria. Ava longed to be one of them, but she had gotten an ice ball thrown at her face enough times to know there was no hope of being friends with anyone at Dangerous High. And it was no better at home. This is like the triggering stuff. This is her siblings being assholes to her. Um, anyway, in the Andrews household, things had always been rocky between Ava and her siblings. During school hours, Zen and, oh God, Neo and Zen pretended they didn't even know who she was. It wasn't anything she wasn't already used to. I don't think that's the right too. But anyway, <laughs> Ava knew from day one that her bullies at school were also coming home with her. One time when she was ten, Zen had thrown, oh my god, had flown her up to the roof and left her there. It was four hours before Peter and Victoria realised that Ava was missing. Neo would always pick her up 
would always pick Ava up and run as fast as he could, but her fragile human body could never take the speed. The, the two of them had even tied Ava to the top of the school flagpole on her first day of eighth grade. She was there all day screaming for help. Everyone that passed the flagpole that day ignored her, and when Neil and Zen got home, giggling, Victoria knew straight away that something was wrong. They were grounded for two months. <laughs> this didn't stop them from making every single day of Ava's life hell, and she was sick of it. That afternoon, Ava was walking th to the school bus when she was grabbed uh, from behind by two sets of arm arms. She heard Zen's familiar laugh and recognised Neo's light bl lightning blonde hair. Ava started fighting back and managed to punch Zen in the face, but her brothers were stronger and, and continued to push her back inside the empty school. What are you doing? Oh god, what are you guys doing? She shouted as they pushed her into an empty locker, slamming the door a once Ava was inside. Zen stared at her through the lock the locker slits. You'll see, he mocked. Please, Ava sobbed. Please let me out. But it was too late. Her brothers were already gone. Ava felt like she was waiting forever in the cramped, dark locker. She looked at her wrist. Watch. It read 10pm. Weren't her parents looking for her or wondering where she was? Ava heard footsteps and started banging against the locker door. Help! Help! She pled. Please help. I'm stuck in here. The locker opened and there stood a smirking Zen. Hello, sister. He forced her out of the locker. Neo was holding some rope. It looked like he didn't want to be involved at all. Come on, tie her up and then we can get this over and done with, Zen stated. What over and done with? Oh god, what over and done with? Yeah, no, that was right. Why did I repeat that? I don't know. Ava asked. Neo ran around her body, wrapping it in the rope. Ava struggled to stand. Y you can't do this to me. What would mum and dad say? Good thing mum and dad think that you're at a friend's place. I'm surprised they even believe that. Or, you know, maybe they don't care about their disappointing daughter. Zen sneered. Ava's words caught in her throat and made a, gurgl a gurgling noise. Maybe Zen was right. How could they love her? Ava was the one thing that ruined their whole legacy by being normal, born normal. Let's go before they start wondering where we have gone. Zen grabbed Ava and the remaining rope and then faced Neo. Stay here and give me the signal if everyone comes this way. Neo only nodded. Neo! Oh god, Ava cried. Neo, please stop him! Oh. But Neo just shook his head. God, Neo's just a, like, a bystander, isn't he? I forgot... There's some... It's a little bit darker than I, I thought. I should probably put a warning. This will go at the beginning. Zen flew Ava up to the top of the flagpole. Ah, the memories, Zen laughed. This is wrong, Zen, Ava snapped. Her older brother glared at her. No! You know what's wrong? You! How could you ever think that you could be one of us? Zen mocked as he tied Ava to the flagpole. And before Ava could say anything else, he was gone. So this is like them doing a repeating action, what they did when they were younger. Because what I don't mention is that the lightning is is kind of, it's something, but we'll, we'll get to that. Anyway, it was pitch black and Ava could see nothing. At least she wasn't in the cramped locker anymore, but the alternative of the pole wasn't any better. God, that sounds very, like, raunchy. Anyway, if Zen hadn't tied the rope tight enough, Ava would fall to her death. She had given up on calling for help. There was no one left at school on a Friday. The tears rolled down her cheeks. Ava couldn't even dry her eyes since her arms were tied. Why does everyone hate me? Ava sniffed. I wish I could bring them the same pain that they have brought me. Thunder in the distance boomed. A storm was brewing. Is that a promise? Echoed a voice. What? Ava's heart leapt. Is this not right? Oh god. Leapt? <laughs> Apparently I spelt that wrong. Um, was there someone else there? The voice rumbled. What? 
you just said. Do you promise to do it? Ava looked around. Yes, she stuttered, but the voice didn't reply. All Ava could hear was the booming of thunder and the sparks of lightning. One of Storm Island's infamous tornadoes was on its way, and Ava knew that she was in the worst possible my god was in the worst place possible this is when it gets a little bit darker not gonna lie because anyway you'll see we're almost we're toward we're like towards the end because there's yeah there's two years 10 years later sorry you oh my god (laughs) i missed a whole paragraph not paragraph but sentence in the morning zen and neo went back to get their sister but at the top of the flagpole they only found burnt rope and a severed hand lying at the... This is, like, it's important for later. This is gross, but they basically think she's dead. Um, and a severed hand lying at the base of the flagpole. You did this, Neo cried. I did this? You are as much as a part of this as I am, Zen protested. protested. Looking at his younger brother, Neo asked, What are you going to tell Mum and Dad? We will tell them a twisted version of the truth, Zen stated. He cringed as he picked up the hand. We are going to have to hide this. That We are going to have to hide that we were any part of this. Neo nodded and the two boys went home. Ten years later. This is like the supervillain part of it. Anyway. A hooded figure... Oh my god. A hooded figure dressed in black stood in the crowd listening. We are so happy to be here today, Zen smiled. As many of you know, we had a sister with the same, with the exact same problem. So this is like they're opening a hospital for anyone who doesn't have superpowers now because apparently there's a problem if you don't have them. But really, it's the birth of villains happening. So the fact that people are born without superpowers powers means they're going to be a super villain later on in life which is kind of what's happened to Ava anyway spoilers Uh, the crowd awed and we wanted to help all of you become your own heroes everyone clapped I actually don't know how I didn't vomit in my own mouth the figure mumbled to themselves uh, weaving through the crowd to find a better spot so it gives us great pleasure to unveil the new Ava Andrews Hospital hospital today, named after our sister who died from the anti-super disease. So this is them, like, making up shit. Neo continued. The figure stopped, thinking for only a moment before scoffing and moving forward again. Neo sighed. We only wish that our parents were here today to see this happen. The two were then passed a giant pair of scissors to cut the red red ribbon. The crowd continued to applaud and cheer. The figure in black smirked. Time to spice things up. <laughs> oh no, I could have thought of a lot better things to say there. And slowly flicked their wrist. Suddenly, darkness appeared from nowhere and a laugh echoed throughout the unveiling ceremony. Then BOOM! Parts of the new hospital started to explode. People ran for cover from the debris. Neo ran as fast as he could to save civilians, but for some, it was too late. There was smoke, fire, and parts of the new hospital lying across the east end of the island. The laugh continued to echo. The figure slowly started to walk through the mayhem that they had created, getting closer to the front of the hospital. Zen looked looked to his brother. What's going on? Neo was catching his breath, breath, but then looked at Zen. I'm not sure, but this is, but this never happens here. Never, Neo said as he tried to claim. Oh my God, calm. Is that claim? No, it's calm. <laughs> um, some of the people he had saved. Zen was walking through the broken hospital when he saw a figure dressed in black with a hood and a mask. Zen moved closer to them. You were the one that did this, he sneered. The hooded figure turned around. What are you going to do if I was, honey? They teased. Zen started to fly towards them. I'll rip you apart, he snapped. At the last minute, the figure pushed their hands out. 
There was a power that Zen didn't understand, a strength that was stopping him from reaching his enemy. This was a superpower that he had never seen before. Zen tried to move closer to the figure. What are you doing? He yelled. The figure smirked. I'm your worst nightmare. <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> I'm your worst nightmare, mate. <laughs> I'm your worst nightmare, dear. Nightmare, dear. But you have seen nothing yet. They snapped their fingers and part of the building fell down on Zen, leaving him unable to escape. He tried to pull himself out of the rubble. The figure watched until Zen's hands were bloody, but there was no way out. The figure in black moved step by step closer to him. Please, d don't hurt me, Zen stuttered. The, m the masked figure smirked. Funny, you never used to be scared of me, Zen. Sneering as they bent down so they could see into their eyes. A Ava? It couldn't be possible. Y you died. We found your hand. Yes, that was most unfortunate. <laughs> Ava said, looking down at a silver one that now replaced it. How? Zen asked. Darling, I was merely reborn, reborn. Plus, I have you to thank for who I am now. Ava took off her mask, revealing a nasty lightning bolt scar. Oh, nasty lightning bolt looking. Oh my god, nasty lightning bolt looking scar. That is a mouthful. Why? Oh my god, how did I pass my writing degree? That covered most of the left side of her face. Zen shuddered in horror. He would have run away, but he couldn't. How could he have been the one that turned her into this? But you don't have a superpower, Zen stated. You see, I wasn't born with the glorious super gene, but I was born with something else. My master likes to call it the anti-gene. <laughs> That's so cringe, Ava continued. Zen gasped, finding it hard to breathe under the weight of the debris. What does that mean? For the island, then, he saw a flash of blue. It was Neo, and, Neva, and Ava hadn't noticed him. Neva? <laughs> and Ava hadn't noticed him yet. Ava stood back up and circled Zen like a shark. It means that all these diseased people actually have a chance to, do, to be something amazing. Ava snapped, bringing Zen's attention back to her. Did you know that people are more likely to be born with the anti-gene than to be born with the super gene? Being like me is actually more common now, Ava scoffed. All Zen had to do was continue to stall her and Neo might just have a chance to save him. You think what you've become is amazing, Zen panted? It's better than what I was. At least I'm not treated like a dog that nobody wanted. My master needs me. This is the lightning that is her master that's given her, like, the power to be, like, a super villain. Anyway, it sounds a little bit cringe, but we're going to keep going because, you know, it's stories. Um... Yeah, my master needs me and the cause needs me. Ava smirked. Now, Neo! Zen shouted. The blue flash came running towards Ava, but she was too quick for him. She used both of her hands against Neo, forcing him back and into a standstill. Ava laughed. She knew something was up when Zen asked about the island's safety. Because Zen does not care about anyone but himself, if that was not clear. All he... All, yeah, all he had ever cared about was himself. She was filled with rage and hatred, which had grown from all those years of bullying at Zen's control. You think I'm stupid? I could always see when you were coming, Ava smirked. Nice call, Zen, Neo snapped. It was, wasn't it? Zen forced himself out of the debris and launched himself at Ava with a metal pole. Ava was stronger now and could no longer be stopped by her brothers. She wasn't here to show fear. She was here to show how powerful she had become. But the lightning storm had given, given her too much power. She had enough time to force... to force Neo back into the hospital debris and to stop Zen with the metal pole. But it all happened too quickly. All of 
of her attention was on Neo, and Ava didn't have enough time to vo- focus back on Zen. The pole went right through Zen's stomach. He screamed out in pain. Blood poured on the ground. He knelt, grabbing his wound. So it's a little bit of a revenge story, not gonna lie. Anyway, Ava moved closer to him. Zen was all she could manage to say. Zen spat blood from his mouth. <laughs> Don't touch me, he said leaving a bloody red smile on his face. This is what you wanted all along? To kill me? Mum and Dad would be so proud. Ava stood, rigid, like her feet were glued in place. She couldn't believe that she had... what she had just done, to her brother no less. Zen, this was never what I wanted, she said, breaking the silence. Zen collapsed, still holding the pole. Ava went to him, supporting his head. Blood was everywhere, and there was nothing she could do. Ava sobbed. I'm so so sorry, Zen. Pulling him close to her. What have you done? Neo shouted, running to his little brother. Get out of here! He pushed Ava away from Zen. Ava stood and moved. Neo, I didn't mean to. I. He's my brother! She wept. He was my brother too. Neo stood over Zen's body. You've ruined everything, Ava. Ava didn't know what to say. She shrank away. Neo turned all his attention to his little sister. Never come back here, you hear me? And if you do, I'll kill you myself. And you were never supposed to be a hero, Ava. Neo breathed heavily, glaring Ava down. Ava regained herself in that moment, realising how truly alike her brothers were and that she would never be seen as an equal. I was never destined, I know that, but whoever said that wasn't, that I wasn't supposed to be a hero forgot that there's always a balance to everything in nature, and that's what I am. I'm the villain, and I'm ready to even the scales. Ava held her head high, and then she disappeared along with the storm, leaving her brothers behind in the middle of the hospital wreckage. And that's the story. So it's kind of like the origins of how super villains became a thing. Like it's these three siblings or now two siblings that, you know, Neo was kind of always the bystander, but, you know, never really shut any of Zen's ideas down. He was always like, yeah, okay, we guess we'll do it then. If you want to. And so... Ava's, like, you know, got all this, like, hatred towards them from shit that they did in the past. Um, And I suppose it's kind of, like, drawing on, like, all the shit I went through in high school. Like, no one had a good high school experience, and if you did, you're kidding yourself. But this is just, like, amplifying on that. And, like, you know, I love a good origin story on how the villain became the villain, if you don't know that. Like, you should probably watch my How to Write a Villain story. Um, Well, not story, but video Um, because I enjoyed making that way too much. Heroes are very interesting, but villains always have a very, like, traumatic past, which makes them way more interesting than the hero, in my opinion, which is why I wrote Ava. Like, she is kind of, like, battling with herself because she knows what she did was wrong. Like, she didn't want to kill Zen. Like, she just wanted to fucking freak him out and scare him and then leave, which is why they had the whole, like, hospital thing, and then she was also there to collect, like, any of the people that had the anti-gene, um, which she, like, does that in the end, and, like, she was meant to, like, in my opinion, if I ever did sit down and write, like, a short, like, series of this, she was going to be, like, redeemed in the end, and she was going to be, like, you know, stop herself from, like, doing the lightning's bidding, like, the master's bidding, um, because she, deep down, she knows it wasn't right, but she only wanted to be, like, a part of it, because she was left out all those years, and, like, she was normal, and she wanted to be, like, look at me, i like, I'm just as good as you, even, you know, without powers, or, like, with powers, like, I can be like you, but because, like, her brothers never let her, like, kind of in, she became so spiteful, which is why, like, all this happened. But, like, the end, I wanted to show that she was still, like, human, which is why, like, 
she's like says, you know, he's my brother. You know, I didn't mean to do it. And like Neo was just kind of like over it and was just like, yeah, okay, well, you did it anyway and you, you, you done fucked up Ava. Um, but like the whole point of it is just like, yeah, um, there's too many heroes and we need to balance everything out. Not that, you know, it's meant to be like a massacre or anything, but with every good there is an evil and every dark there is a light kind of vibe thing. Anyway, it, like, I really enjoyed writing it. It was really, like, messed up and fucked up, but it's meant to be, it's meant to be, like, a little bit messed up and fucked up, but that's, like, I, like, this, I, this is even before I watched The Boys, but reading it, it just reminds me of that TV show a lot. Like, it's meant to be like, hey, they're superheroes, but they're kind of, like, jerks. I mean, like, they're not weird like Homelander, but, like, they're on the same level of jerkness that he is. Um, and so, like, Ava, I don't know how you, like, Ava's, like, the other side of that. I guess she's, like, Huey and (laughs) she's on, like, that squad, but she's, like, evil. Not evil, but, like, you know, misguided, (laughs) I'd say. Anyway, guys, that's all I've got for you today. Please like, subscribe, because that's always nice. Thumbs up for superheroes and supervillains. Anyway, goodbye!